Hi everyone, I'm Ichi from Tangerine Knits and today I'll be talking to you about the projects that I plan to knit up in 2023. I have 10 planned projects in mind that I want to show you and for almost all of these I have the pattern picked out and I have the yarn already in my possession so I'll be talking to you about my yarn choice as well as any planned modifications that I want to make. For a couple of these, I have either the yarn or the pattern or a vision, and so I'll be talking you through those as well. Then after I talk about these patterns, I'll be sharing my knitting intentions for the year. And before I jump into the first project, I'll just preface this planning video by saying that, as Eisenhower once said, plans are useless, but planning is essential. And I think that's really the spirit with which I'm approaching my 2023 knitting planning. I want to have ideas of what I want to make, um, but also I'm leaving space for the potential for things to change. So all that is to say, I am sharing your, my plans with you as they stand in this moment, but we'll look back, I guess, together at the end of the year and see how they all unfolded. So yes, with that, we can get started with my first knitting plan, which is the Hete sweater by The Petite Knitter. This is a colorwork yoke sweater, and I am really excited to cast this on partly because I'm just on my high from working on my Lume sweater by Sari Nordlin, which I talked about in my last knitting podcast, and I've had such a great time working on this colorwork sweater, this is my first one, that I really want to make another one. And I'm really drawn to this particular pattern, the Hete sweater, because of the daintiness of the floral motif on the yoke. So the Lume sweater also has kind of a similar-ish floral motif, but they're a lot more rounded and there's more like leaves um, in the Lume sweater as well. Whereas for the Hete sweater, I feel like everything is a little bit more pointy and angular, which to me is just more wintry. Um, it kind of is like snowflakes or icicles where things are, are less rounded and more angular. And so I really like that. I love the little dainty details um, of color work right above the hem and the cuffs on the sleeves. That's a really nice touch. So it's not just having the color work on the yoke. Um, and I really like the colors that the Petite Knitter chose as well. So I think this would be a really nice wintry sweater to wear. Um, the yarn that I have for it is the uh, Cascade Yarns Eco Merino DK. So I got them in two colors. This one is 05 Dark Chocolate. And then the main color that I picked out is 07 Sandy Beach. So this is a wool and spun undyed yarn. I had to look up the difference between wool and spun and worsted spun. I think the main difference is that wool and spun yarns are spun with the fibers going in every which way, whereas um, the worsted spun yarn have the fleece, have the fibers all going the same direction before it's being spun. So one of the analogies I saw online is like wool and spun is like bed hair, whereas worsted spun is like combed hair. And so the main difference is that the wool and spun yarns are more airy because the fibers are not all so aligned. Um, so I think that's the main difference between this Eco Merino DK and the Cascade 220. I believe most commercial yarns these days are worsted spun. So uh, I'm not sure actually if I've ever used a wool and spun yarn, um, but this is the first time I guess that I've consciously <laughs> used a wool and spun yarn. So I'm excited to see what the result is. Maybe it'll be really nice and squishy and lovely. So I, I look forward to that. Uh, it is also an undyed yarn, so there's not a whole lot of colorways. I believe this is the one like dark brown color that they had. I wanted to choose a color that matched the sample that the designer had on the Ravelry page because I really liked the the oatmeal and the brown. Um, by the way, I think hete is the Norwegian word for cabin, which I think the colors just really embody that pretty perfectly. Like this off-white snowy field and then the brown is kind of like a wood cabin. A log cabin so I thought that was really cute but yes it was pretty easy to pick the uh, contrast color for the base color they had a variety of off-white types of colors and I was debating between a couple that were more like a warm white as opposed to the grays light grays and in the end, I picked this one. I got this from Wool Warehouse and they were so kind to actually send me a photo of a lot of, uh, of three of these yarns like side by side so I can see what the difference is. I tried to look on Ravelry project page examples, but you know, people's projects are all 
photograph in different lighting conditions. So it's a little bit difficult to tell exactly what color it is, especially for like an off-white. It's so difficult to capture accurately. Um, and so that was really nice for Wool and, Co uh, for Wool and Company to show me a comparison photo of all these uh, the three yarns I was choosing between all together. So I picked Sandy Beach because um, one, it's actually marled. So it's kind of plied with two different colors. One is more brown and one is more white. So I thought there would be like a little bit of depth or heathering, maybe not marling, um, to the sweater. I thought that would be really nice. And also it's, there's definitely going to be contrast, but it's not so high contrast. So I kind of like that the two colors will kind of blend together versus having a brown and like a pretty stark, uh, white color. So I hope these will look good together. I do have a hard time figuring out what color off-white or what color beige goes with my skin tone. I can't really tell if my skin is neutral or like warm. I know warm skin tones go well with more like softer off-white colors, whereas, you know, neutral skin tones can pull off more like stark whites. So I don't really know if this will be the right <laughs> beige for my complexion, but you know, I think I think we'll probably be okay either way. So this I'm really excited to cast on. Um, and I hope that I will be able to do that in the next couple of months. Sometime this winter, I'd like to be able to make it. Although I acknowledge that if I make it in the winter, it probably wouldn't be done until the weather gets too warm, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. Um, in terms of modifications, there's a couple I have in mind. So first, the pattern has more of a funnel neck, and I think I would prefer a folded collar for this. I think I'll see after it's knit up, because I think if the funnel collar is pretty floppy, then I would just prefer to have it folded down. But if this yarn actually has pretty nice structure and the funnel neck stands up pretty well, then maybe I'll leave it. So that's up for debate, but for now, I think I would prefer a folded collar. Um, the other modification I want to make is to the bottom ribbing because currently the cuffs and the bottom hem are just um, solid in the contrast color. And it to me, it just looks a little bit dark, especially because the top of the yoke is pretty dainty and there's like the little dainty um, color work right above the hem. I just feel like the solid color, really dark colored hem just makes it look a little bit bottom heavy. So I'm interested in trying out corrugated ribbing. So purling in one color and knitting in the other color. Um, so there's kind of vertical stripes going along the ribbing and the cuff. I think that would be a pretty nice way to break up the dark contrast color and also add some interest. So I'll probably do some swatches before I decide, but that's something that I'm thinking of right now. I know that Andrea Maori uses a lot of corrugated ribbing in her patterns and they always look really gorgeous. And I think she even has a YouTube tutorial on how to do it. Um, although I think it's basically like stranded knitting, but instead of only knitting stockinette, you're knitting and purling as well as you do for ribbing. So that's uh, another modification that I plan to make. So yeah, I'm looking forward to working on this one. The second project that I want to make is the sweater number 23 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And the inspiration behind this is that I really wanted a quote bougie sweatshirt to quote the phrase from Young Folk Knits who's holding the uh, bougie sweatshirt knit along right now. And I think it'll be really nice to just have a very easy breezy crew neck sweatshirt to just throw on and wear all the time. And I chose the yarn Phil Kalana Peruvian Highland Wool. I've not used it before, but I hear everybody talk about how soft it is and how there's little to no itch factor, which I think will be the perfect thing to have for a sweatshirt type of sweater. And I have not knitted this up yet, but compared to other non-superwash wools, this just straight out of the ball, no blocking, feels incredibly soft. It's not prickly at all when I kind of feel it around my neck. Um, so I think it'll be really promising. I got this in the color Fisherman Blue, I believe. It's color 818. And it's kind of like a denim blue color that, again, has some dimension. I think it's one of the melange colors, so it's not one solid colors. There's also some, I think, white fibers in here if I look closely. So yes, I got 11 balls of this, which should be enough to make me a pretty oversized sweater. So I wanted a crew neck drop shoulder sweatshirt for this, sweater pattern for this sweatshirt <laughs> knit. And I was debating between a couple of patterns. I mean, there's so many that are out there for a pretty basic sweater. And in the end, I was coming down between the sweater number 11, sweater number 23 by My Favorite Things Knitwear, and also the Harlow sweater by Kadri. 
but ultimately I decided that I just really like the uh, the detail along the collar that my favorite things knitwear has and also the detail right on the back of the sweater as well. I really like those details. I, the Harlow sweater also has nice neck increase details and also um, like I think it's an I-cord detailing on the back, but I think I just like the sweater number 23 version a little bit more. It's a little bit thicker um, than the one in the Harlow sweater. So I think I'm gonna go for that. The main modification I want to make for the, my, for the sweater number 23 is that I want to knit the neckband in Twisted Rib. I have not knitted Twisted Rib as part of a garment before. I practiced knitting it in a swatch and I think it would be nice to try. It will make the ribbing look a little bit more, I guess, dainty. <laughs> I know I just said that a lot for my other project plan, but I like to do that. And also I'm considering doing a split hem, but I have not decided yet. I think I'm gonna see how this yarn drapes and then decide from there whether I want a split hem or not. So that is my second plan. And then I can talk a little bit more about this yarn. So I chose this color partly because the sweater number 23 pattern sample is kind of in this gray slate slate slash blue type of color and I really liked it. And this isn't quite the same color. It's a lot more blue than gray. But honestly, this is one of the only colors that were available from the Etsy seller that I was getting this yarn from. It's not the easiest to get this yarn in the US where I live. I've um, gotten this from just Etsy and they they do like turn over stock I think pretty quickly but sometimes for a while I was looking for this yarn and they didn't have it in hardly like any colors and sweater quantities and at one point I saw this one I figured ah it's probably a nice enough color I'll snag it I hope it'll be easy enough to style because I wear denim a lot and this I know is a pretty similar color to dark wash denim but hopefully it would look good with light wash denim or like a faded gray denim so yeah, we'll see how this goes. That's my second plan. My third knitting plan is a knitted jacket. And the current thinking is that I would do the Mavs jacket by Sharon Deuce. I will put the designer name in the description box in case I am terribly mispronouncing it. So this is kind of like a bomber jacket look. It has the collar, it has snaps instead of buttons, and it also has these pockets. Um, also like a cinched sleeve detailing that looks kind of like a sewn jacket and I think it's a really cool look that's something where you could kind of wear open or closed and it would look good either way and the yarn that I want to use is again the Phil Kalana Peruvian Highland Wool in the color cinnamon I got this in the same order that I got the blue uh, Phil Kalana Peruvian Highland Wool from the same seller and I also got 11 balls and so I don't think it's quite enough yardage that the pattern calls for so I probably would omit the pockets and just do the flaps so they're like faux pockets um, and I also may need to knit it a little bit more cropped I'll have to I'll have to see how much yarn I think it would take and and how much I could knit from that I also think I would like to use buttons instead of snaps so I will probably have to look up some tutorials for um, doing that but I have some like tortoiseshell buttons that I think would look pretty nice uh, with this yarn so the Mavs jacket is currently what I have in mind but if I don't get to knitting it before the weather turns to warm and it becomes a fall project instead of a winter project then I might kind of reassess and see if there are other patterns that I want to knit um, so for instance, I have been looking on the website of Baba, which is a Spanish brand. They sell a lot of Spanish Merino classic looking pieces and a lot of them look like patterns that are pretty popular for knitting. So for example, one of their cardigans looks really similar to the Field Day cardigan by Ozetta and I knitted the Field Day cardigan already, which is I think the same pattern just in a lighter gauge. So I think that could be something that looks pretty nice. Um, with a yarn like this and a color like this for the fall. So maybe that's something I could do. Um, and something else I really liked on the Baba website is the sweater, the cardigan number 23, which is more of a round crew neck or funnel neck collar with buttons going all the way up to the top. I think that's a really cool look as well. It's also pretty boxy and structured. The only thing is that I'm not sure how good that would look open. Um, I think in most of the product photos, the buttons are buttoned up all the way. The pattern itself looks really similar to the Miles jacket by Ozetta, 
but in Ozetta's pattern, there's no button on the collar, on the rib collar itself, only below it. So yes, if I get to knitting my jacket this winter, I might opt for the mask jacket, but then in the fall, I might reassess and see what kind of style I really like. And the main contenders there would be the field day cardigan or the field day jacket by Ozetta or the Miles jacket by Ozetta, but modify to have buttons that go up all the way and then modify to have a cropped straight hem versus the long kind of scalloped hem that it has. So those are kind of my thoughts on my knitted jacket. For my fourth project, we're going to be transitioning a bit into the warmer springtime weather. And I'd like to knit a vest, specifically the Friday Slipover by Petite Knit. And I want to knit it using the Knitting for Olive Merino and the Knitting for, knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. The Knitting for Mo Olive Merino is in the color Dark Cognac and then the Soft Silk Mohair is in the color Dark Ochre. So this is a pretty infamous yarn combination and the biggest motivation for wanting to do this pattern is really that I want to try out this yarn. So I mentioned in my previous podcast videos that I unfortunately have pretty sensitive skin so I always thought that I wouldn't be able to tolerate mohair. Sometimes it just feels pretty prickly even just like feeling it on my neck. So I've been a bit apprehensive about that. But so many patterns call for mohair and I really like the way that it looks. And so I figured that a good low stakes way to try out mohair is by knitting something like a vest. First, you're not wearing it next to skin. So that hopefully would mitigate the skin sensitivity that you would feel. And secondly, it's a pretty small garment. There's no sleeves. So it's not a whole lot of investment in terms of the yarn that you have to buy or the time that you have to spend in knitting it. So I thought that would be a good way to do that. And I chose the Friday slipover because I really like the broken rib texture. I think that differentiates it from the more stockinette type of vests. And I think that maybe it would be more interesting as a process knit. I also, I do already have the pattern in my pattern library. I have the crew neck version of the Friday slipover, but I am considering getting the V-neck version because I think that a V-neck would just look a little bit better um, for me. I have the, I bought the crew neck one a while ago wanting to use a different yarn for it. And at the time I thought that a V-neck would be too complicated to knit, but I think now I've knit V-necks before and I think it would totally be okay. Um, and ultimately I think a V-neck might just look a little bit better on me. But I'm going to hold off on that until I knit up a swatch of the broken rib to just make sure I like it in this fabric. Um, and then I'll, I'll consolidate and fully commit to either one of the necklines. <laughs> the fifth project that I want to knit is the Cumulus Tee. And the reason I chose the pattern is really because of the yarn. Um, I got the yarn first and I was trying to figure out what I can knit with it with the amount that I have. Um, and I think the Cumulus Tee fits the bill. So the yarn is the Plucky Knitter Primo Fingering in the color Garnet Martini. It is a superwash merino, 75% uh, superwash merino, 20% cashmere, and 5% nylon. So it's a super soft, pretty luxurious feeling yarn. And the color is absolutely stunning. It's a deep purple and it's a tonal. So it kind of looks like a different color depending on how you turn it. I found it again in the back wall of my knitting store. They have this like just big shelf at the back that has discontinued skeins or just the last final few uh, balls of yarn that are... 50% off. Um, and I like to kind of browse through that and see what's out there. And this one really drew me in because the color was so gorgeous and I fully expected it to not look very good on me because I don't normally go for this color, but I was surprised to find that it's actually really, really nice. Um, so they were two balls and I grabbed both of them thinking I'd make like a tank top or something. But then I realized like, a wool tank top is still probably going to be pretty warm and this isn't exactly like a summer or spring type of color um, for a tank top and so I thought maybe a tee would be better. Also these two together is like 880 yards and that should be enough to make a tee, like a long sleeve tee so it's more of a, of a transitional piece because it's, uh, it's, it's wool but it's fingering so it's not going to be super heavy. So I think that the cumulus blouse, uh, the cumulus blouse or the cumulus tee should fit the bill for this one. I would imagine this has really nice drape and feels pretty good around the skin and probably should have no itch factors in superwash merino. Uh, the Cumulus Tee looks like a pretty clean, you know, classic looking piece. So I think that's kind of why I went with that one. But if there's other long sleeve tees 
um, I'm open to recommendations. But I'm just so excited to even swatch out this yarn. I think it'll be so gorgeous. And I think that's one of the reasons I really like looking in that sale bin because it's pretty fun to just find yarns that either are in a fiber that I usually wouldn't go for or in a color that I wouldn't usually go for and then just kind of take a chance on something that's you know pretty small because there's usually not that many skeins of them left um, and take a chance and, and see if it you know unlocks a different type of yarn that I can knit with so yeah I'm looking forward to using this Okay, my project number six is really two projects, so it's like 6A and 6B, and that's going to be the Cami number six and shorts number one set by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I have not knit a tank top or shorts before, but I have always wanted like a nice lounge set. And I think this would be a good opportunity to knit one because it didn't. It doesn't seem like it would be a whole lot of knitting. It's knit using two strands, um, knitting for all of pure silk, knitting for all of merino. So two of them held together is about a worsted gauge. And so I think it would be a pretty quick knit. And hopefully it wouldn't be super duper warm because they're two fingering weight yarns. So I hope it'll still be like nice and drapey and comfortable to wear just lounging around. And the yarns that I use, for the first time in my life, I'm using the exact yarns being called for in the pattern. I often make modifications like I'll drop the mohair or just substitute with yarns that are more accessible where I live or just based on what I have in the stash. So anyway, this is the same yarns and even the same colors that are used in the sample for the cami number six at least. The way it looks like in the sample, it comes together to be like a pretty soft brown color. And I really like that. I think this is like the third planned project in a brown color that I'm showing today. So you can tell that I have a favorite color palette. <laughs> I will say that after I had gotten this, I heard more people talk about how knitting for all of pure silk pills a whole lot. And the merino also pills a lot when you first wear it. So maybe this would need a lot of shaving. I hope you can shave silk. I don't really see why not. So we'll see. If it's going to be a loungewear piece, maybe it wouldn't be a huge deal. I also, uh, for the for the Cami number six, there were a lot of projects on Ravelry that I could see. And it looks like the Cami does have pretty nice drape. But then for the shorts, I didn't see any on Ravelry. Maybe I need to look on Instagram or something like that to see what people think of the shorts. I have not knit shorts before. They look pretty drapey and kind of like baggy anyway. So I hope that it would be pretty easy to get a good fit. But I'm really particular about the way pants fit. Um, so I hope that you know, it wouldn't be a huge issue to get shorts that fit. I think that if you can just put an elastic band, I know that's already a lot of leeway to adjust it based on your waist measurements, but yes, I hope that the, the shorts will be, will be also flattering. I really hope that this project works out because I don't know what else I would do <laughs> with these yarns. I don't think that like cardamom looks particularly good against my skin tone on its own. And then I don't really know what to do with five balls of this fingering weight merino. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, if I hadn't said this color is nut brown and then this color is cardamom. So yeah, I will knit up a swatch and then we'll see how it goes. So since I just showed one pure silk project, I will show the other one, which I will say is the project to, uh, that I'm talking about today that I'm least committed to because I know it would be a huge endeavor and I don't know if I would be able to get through it. But the idea that I have is to knit a cami dress. So I've seen a lot of people do this where you take a cami pattern and then just like extend it, put increases and make it a dress. I'll put an image of a cami dress I saw on Ravelry where this person took the cami number four, extended it and put increases at the hips and made this dress that looks stunning. And I really wanted to do something similar. And the idea that I had was to make a dress out of a cami number five pattern using the knitting for olive pure silk and I got the color olive. And I think it would be a really lovely dress, but at the same time, I am second guessing my choice because even just the cami, everybody talks about how the body is such a slog to get through. And I'm just imagining like doing that plus the length you need for a dress, plus the increases would probably be like a lot. <laughs> so I got five balls of this cami, uh, of this pure silk to make the dress, but I think I might start with the cami and then see how it goes. So that's 
a pretty tentative project. I think if I didn't do that, I might just end up making another t-shirt using the Pure Silk. Honestly, I would love to hear about your experiences working with the Knitting for All of Pure Silk if, I, if, you, if you have used it before. When I went to a knit night recently and somebody was telling me that her Pure Silk garments pilled like crazy. So I was like, if I'm gonna spend you know, a million hours knitting a dress using this material, I wouldn't really want it to be looking bad after a while. So that's why I'm kind of second guessing that. If not, I might use this for knitting like a tee or something like that. We'll see. Okay, on to project number eight, and that's going to be the twisted loop top. I first saw this on Handmade by Florence, and I loved it. The twist looks so contemporary and clean and modern, and I really like the silhouette as well. I know it sounds like it's not the most bra-friendly top, but it just looks so beautiful, and I really wanted to knit that. The yarn that I think I would use is this Tropical Lane merino it's a fingering weight 100 percent merino i didn't know much about it i found this again in the clearance <laughs> section at my local yarn store and i looked at the looked this up online and it's advertised as um like really fine merino with that's the soft you know quote the softness of cashmere with the elasticity of merino and it is really really soft like when i feel it on my neck it feels not prickly at all, even compared to the Knitting for Olive, have, uh, Knitting for Olive Merino. Yeah, so this one feels like just a little bit rougher, like not rough by any means, but just comparing these two, this is a lot like noticeably softer. And so I think this is promising because with a wool tank top, I am concerned that it would get itchy or uncomfortable or really sweaty. And I think if there's any wool that I could tolerate, it's probably either a superwash wool or something that's supposedly like soft as cashmere. So I think that would be that would be good to use. I have five balls of this and the pattern called for three, 150 grams, I think. So I may have some extra. Um, and with that, I might be able to knit like a hat or something because I think this gray is pretty neutral and would look good in pretty much anything. I'd never heard of this brand before. I don't really know what compelled me to buy it but I did and now I have it, so I might as well use it to knit something. So next we have project number nine, which is going to be the Drinks on the Patio crop. It's another summer pattern and I would like to make it using the Barocco Comfort DK, which is a synthetic yarn. It is 50% super fine nylon, 50% super fine acrylic. It is a DK weight yarn and I have it in the color pine, I believe. Let's see. It's the color 2762 and I'll put that um, in the description box, the color name, but I think it's something to do with pine. And I got this yarn a while ago. I wanted to make the ballerina wrap top by Two of Wands. I was obsessed with that top for the longest time and I really wanted to knit it. That was actually the first garment I ever knitted. It's not, I don't think a very beginner friendly garment, but I just struggled through it because I love that silhouette. I used like a $2 craft acrylic yarn to knit it. And you know, it was the first garment. There's a lot of like, issues with the with the fabric that I knit but I just thought oh I will buy nicer yarn I'll knit it again but I think I've kind of moved on from that now I it's just a little bit too crop for me in terms of the shape but because of that I have this yarn I have four balls of this which is like again I think a pretty random amount it's not really enough to make a sweater or a cardigan but it's a little too much to make like an accessory so I think the drinks on the patio top would be a really good one for it. The pattern does call for a worsted weight yarn, but I think I can get away with substituting a DK weight and just making a larger size. And I think that this yarn, because it's nylon and acrylic, hopefully is pretty light and breathable. So I think that's hopefully something pretty quick that I can knit up. And if I have extra, I'll just figure out what to do with it later. It wasn't particularly expensive, but I don't want it to just like languish in my stash. I would still like to use it. The 10th and final project plan that I have right now is the Date Night Sweater by Kadri. And the motivation behind this is to have a festive red sweater that I can wear for the holidays. So like Christmas and Chinese New Year and uh, maybe even Valentine's Day because that's coming up. And now it makes sense why it's called the Date Night Sweater. The sample is also knit using this really bright red. And yeah, it looks super nice. I saw this on the True Lane podcast and it looked super gorgeous. She had she had knit this using this coral color and it looked really nice. I will have to think about what yarn to knit it out of though because the pattern calls for a Erin weight yarn, which is kind of nice because it doesn't take a long time to knit. So I would hope um, because 
you know, I don't think it would necessarily be a year-round sweater. It's probably more like a statement sweater that I wouldn't wear a whole lot. And so I don't really want to spend like a bajillion hours to knit it necessarily. But at the same time, usually during the holidays, I'm like indoors. I'm often cooking. So I prefer something that wasn't like super warm. So not like, you know, an air and weight wool or alpaca or anything like that. One of the yarn alternatives is the Snefnug, which is what my current sweater is knit using. Um, and this is very warm. And so I don't think something like that would really fly. And also if I'm cooking a lot during the holidays, like things are going to potentially splatter. So ideally it could be relatively easily laundered. So Currently, I think a, a blown yarn could be a good option. So for example, um, I had the Ilamani Sabri, that's a chainette worsted weight yarn. That's mostly cotton and then some alpaca blown through the cotton cord. That's something that could work. Although I looked briefly and I don't think they have the festive red color that I'm looking for. True Lane knit hers using the Katia concept by Katia um, in the cotton merino, which is a cotton core chainette yarn with merino fibers blown through it so that's pretty promising because you know cotton is not going to be as warm so that's something i have in mind i'll have to see if they have a bright red color the other yarn i was thinking of is the cascade cantata which again is a cotton chainette yarn with like superwash merino blown through it but i think that yarn when i looked at the product pictures the white cotton core is like pretty prominent in the yarn so the overall look is like white and red versus just red and i think for this type of sweater i'd like a pretty vibrant red so all that is to say i have the pattern in mind but i don't quite have a yarn in mind and so for that i'm open to recommendations of a probably a chain neck cotton yarn where it comes in a really festive red color that's worsted weight or above um, and isn't going to be super warm so if you have anything in mind please let me know although no rush i don't think i'll be knitting that until next year i mean the end of the year for next year so Yep. So those are all of my knitting pattern plans. And in the last couple of minutes, I would just love to talk about my knitting intentions for next year. And so the first one is that I would like to knit socially more. So I typically knit by myself because I don't really know anybody around me who knits. And so I'll just, you know, sit on my couch, I'll put on a knitting podcast or something like that. And that's kind of why I was inspired to make my own. I really like watching these podcasts because it feels like you're knitting with someone else. And then I like making these podcasts because then I get to kind of like speak, <laughs> speak my piece and talk about my projects and things like that too. Um, so that's all been really fun. And in fact, one of you commented on my last video that watching these podcasts that I make is kind of like knitting with a friend and chatting with a friend. And that just absolutely made my day. So thank you so much for uh, leaving me that comment. And uh, in addition to, to this project, which I very much love, I also would like to find people around me uh, that knit because I know they exist. So one of the things that I'm trying is that last week I went to a knit night, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. One of the local yarn stores hosts like a weekly maker circle. And so you don't have to sign up or anything, you can just show up. So I did that. It was actually a pretty good turnout. I'd say maybe a dozen people, everyone was sitting around this large, table and just brought their own projects and then were knitting. The employees at the store were also around and knitting and they were offering to help people with their projects. So that was pretty cool. Um, and also I want to start my own knit night. <laughs> so I'm doing that next week for the first time with two of my friends and actually neither of them knit yet, <laughs> but they both really want to. And they're both really crafty. One of them is a really talented crocheter. She makes these really gorgeous blankets and really intricate lace patterns using crochet. She just kind of hadn't picked up knitting yet, but it's really interested. So I thought we could all like start knitting um, together. It would, I would be happy to, you know, offer whatever skills that I've learned from my knitting journey. And I'm just so excited to do that, to have like a little knitting slash crafting night. So that's kind of the first intention that I have with knitting, making it not just a solo activity, although I very much, you know, fully plan to continue to enjoy it as a solo activity as well. My second knitting intention is to not knit less per se, but more like leave room for other hobbies. I think what happened is that I just became so into knitting. It is so much fun and I fully enjoy it. And a lot of times like knitting is all I want to do to unwind, to relax, to do something creative. Um, and so I kind of have just abandoned my other hobbies because all I wanted to do was knit. <laughs> 
And that wasn't, there was nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. But I would like to leave some space to pursue other activities as well. If nothing else, just give my hands a break. I was really into reading. I spent a lot of my free time reading and journaling. And that was a really fulfilling activity for me. So I'm trying to ease that back in. So for starters, I started to listen to audiobooks while I knit. <laughs> that used to be impossible because I really need to focus really hard on my knitting. So I would just knit in silence. Uh, when I, uh, but now I think, you know, with certain projects that you really don't need all of your attention. So I'll listen to an audiobook. And that's been a good way to start knitting again. And I also have been trying to, um, you know, sometimes just read <laughs> because not all books come in audiobook formats. And also not all books I think are best enjoy it as an audiobook like sometimes you really sometimes I really want to just read slowly so I can absorb what it's saying um, and so sometimes just like reading at night um, leaving some time before I have to go to sleep so I can read um, that's been pretty nice so yes that's my second knitting plan to um, leave room to do other things beyond knitting <laughs> And then my last knitting intention, which is more like a knitting goal, is I love to knit a garment to gift to a loved one because I have knit a lot of sweaters for myself and that's been really fun, but I also just would really like to do that. Um, I know that my boyfriend would really appreciate a knit garment. He's super knit worthy, by the way. I've knitted him a hat and socks and he adores both of them. He wears his Oslo hat all the time. He wears his socks all the time since I've given it to him. So I think he would really like a sweater. The challenge there is to find the right pattern for him and the right yarn um, because he, you know, has a pretty strong sense of his own style. He likes oversized um, sweaters and nothing that's like super fitted around the arms or anything. So I think fit is something that I'll have to really figure out. And also he doesn't really, he runs really warm temperature wise. So I probably couldn't get away with something like a worsted weight wool because I think he would just overheat and he would really have no opportunity to wear that. So finding a fabric that I think would be long lasting, easy care, and hopefully not too thin. So I don't have to knit for like too long. <laughs> Because, you know, men's sweaters are larger and if he wants it oversized, it's just, you know, even more fabric to knit. So, um, yes, that's one of my knitting intentions, but it's not going to be super short term. I think that's something I'll probably focus on in the second half of the year. And it's also not going to be a secret. I am fully going to bring him along on the whole design process. Um, and I'm going to try it on him all the time to make sure that it fits because I don't want to risk knitting something that doesn't fit. Um, so that could be pretty fun. Um, you know, I can have him pick out the color too because, you know, color I think can be a pretty personal choice. Um, so yeah, that's one of my, that's one of my knitting goals as well. All right, so that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the projects that I've got planned for next year. And I love to hear in the comments what projects you're most excited to knit up in 2023 or any goals or intentions that you have. And lastly, if you like this video, I would super appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, it's really nice to get to share my knitting and share my project plans with you. So thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a nice day. I'll see you again in the next one, hopefully very soon. Bye everyone.